okay. <laughs> I speak to you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, as Christians, we hear a lot about how Jesus became human. It's kind of a, a core thing about our faith, actually. We recite it almost every week as part of the Nicene Creed. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. Some folks even bow during that part of the creed to show reverence to the incarnation of Christ. It's that important. But as important as it is, sometimes I think we hear about it so much that we lose track of how amazing it actually is. Like, just think about it for a second. God, the creator of the universe, of all things seen and unseen, the ground of all being, the profound reality that makes all of this, like, all of it, possible. God loves us so much that God became one of us, dwelt among us. You know, God didn't have to do that. In fact, from the perspective of how gods have been imagined throughout, like, basically all of human history, that is a profoundly weird thing for a god to do. Gods don't stoop to our level. Gods don't become human. But God did it. God became Jesus, became fully human, and, you know, fully divine. And God lived a life. There's a lot that comes with that, isn't there? There's struggles, there's pain, there's indescribable joy and beauty. And Jesus felt all of those things. God felt all of those things. I mean, we know Jesus loved the people around him. We know that he loved eating and drinking with his friends. We know that he mourned, he cried when his friend Lazarus died, even if Jesus also did ultimately raise him from the dead. We know that Jesus felt despair. We read about his agony as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was arrested and crucified. So Jesus experienced all the best and all the absolute worst of what the world has to offer. So our readings today acknowledge that. In our New Testament reading from Hebrews, we're told that Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And that's true. We read about him doing it. And we're also told that Jesus was heard in those prayers. But wait a minute, Jesus was heard, but he still died on the cross. That's kind of hard to hear, isn't it? But come to think of it, I've prayed that something would or wouldn't happen, and had it not go my way, I'm willing to bet everyone in this room has at some point. That's how life is sometimes. And Jesus, well, he lived a life. Then we're told that Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered and was made perfect, becoming the source of salvation for all who obey him. And that's, that's also kind of a difficult statement. So I want to head something off right away. I don't think that suffering in itself is redemptive. And I think this passage could potentially be interpreted in a way that justifies some terrible and kind of abusive things. So I want to be abundantly clear that this passage is not telling us to teach obedience 
through suffering. But we're also told that Jesus is our high priest, and a priest intercedes on behalf of the people, sort of holds the needs of the people before God. It's why a big part of what our priests do is pray for us. And to do that, they need to understand our needs. And to understand our needs, they need to understand us. And Jesus, man, he has been through it. He knows what suffering is. And so when he sits, again, as we pray in the creed, at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, as St. Paul tells us he does in the letter to the Romans, we know he understands us. God understands us. Okay, okay, so God loves us so much that God became Jesus, became one of us. And Jesus loved and lost and celebrated and suffered as badly as a person can suffer. Jesus even experienced praying that things would be different and having it not happen. And now Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, representing us, holding us, as only he can. This is echoed in our reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus outright says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. So Jesus feels troubled in his soul. He knows what's going to happen, but he also knows that what has to happen will happen. And just to make sure we know that, this voice comes from heaven, just to affirm that, yes, what has to happen will happen. And we know what comes later. We're coming up on the end of Lent. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, which kicks off Holy Week. We'll see Jesus enter Jerusalem in triumph. We'll see him arrested. We'll see him suffer. We'll see his horrific death on the cross. And two weeks from today, we'll celebrate his resurrection when he showed us once and for all that death is not the end. When he showed us that even when you've been put through the absolute worst, there is hope. We'll see Jesus rise, still marked by the scars of his suffering, demonstrating for us that though that suffering is so real, it's not the final word. Lent is a time of self-examination, and as we come to the end of it, take a little time to consider your own scars. Consider how your own life has taught you, has helped you understand others better. As Jesus, as, as God, came to know us, and how our, how our experiences help us How can our experiences help us to better understand and empathize with one another, with those in need, with the marginalized in our community and in our world, with those who don't get the kind of understanding that we all need very often? Because I'll tell you what, Jesus understands them. We've all had difficult experiences. We've all had to do things that are scary. We all have hurts. We all have scars. But instead of letting them make us hard, what if we, like Jesus, offer them to the glory of God? What if we let them make us more like Jesus, more compassionate, more loving, more able to say, from the cross itself, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Let us pray. God of love, thank you for the gift of your understanding. 
Thank you for living among us. Thank you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to follow his example, to bear our own suffering with courage, to recognize the suffering of others, and to work for the healing of them and of the world. Help us to glorify you in our care for one another. In your holy name we pray. Amen.